Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will derive the torque equation for induction motor using Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, if you recall this diagram we had studied earlier also, this is the stator and this is rotor and this is shaft here. When we talk of the sink speed, N sink, that means it is the speed of the stator magnetic field. Now this will be fixed and it is given by 120 multiplied by frequency, line frequency, 50 hertz and divided by P number of poles. So this is the stator magnetic field. We also convert this into, instead of RPM, we convert it into radians per second by using this formula. So it is omega sink uh, and sink 2 pi radians divided by 60 seconds. So this will give the radian um, angular, angular speed. Now, when in the question uh, it says at what speed, that means it is asking the rotor speed or the mechanical speed. So the mechanical speed Nm is given by 1 minus sink multiplied by uh, sink speed. Okay, let's uh, understand um, the relation between torque and power power is equal to torque multiplied by angular velocity and the torque induced in the rotors then can be written from here as torque induced is equal to power air gap divided by the angular uh, velocity omega sink and we will also talk about maximum power uh, maximum torque T max which will be equal to P air gap max divided by omega sink. Now this is the torque speed diagram. So when we are saying torque maximum then this is the point maximum point where torque is maximum. And when we are just saying torque induced then it could be any point in the graph. And we will also uh, talk about starting torque. This is when uh, the speed is zero, so starting torque. We'll uh, talk about this later. Okay. Now the equivalent circuit, single phase equivalent circuit of an induction motor is given uh, as shown here. So the power air gap power in this case will be I2 square multiplied by this resistance. So I2 square multiplied by R2 over S. Now this is for single phase. For three phase we have to multiply it by three. So the total power, total air gap power, three times I square, I2 square R over S. So we have to keep in mind that the air gap power is dependent on R2 over S. Okay, now T induced can be calculated from uh, two um, powers, one is the power converted divided by the angular speed and the other we just discussed is the air gap power divided by angular speed. Now power converted is here on the rotor side and air gap power is on the stat stator side. Now since this omega m or the rotor speed changes depending on the load so it is preferable that we use this formula uh, for calculating induced torque where omega sink remains fixed for a particular machine okay now from the circuit we have to find what is air gap power and as we mentioned that the, we have to find actually the total air gap power 3 I2 square R2 S. 
so we need to have the value of i2 first of all and also we need to have the value of uh, y sync to get the value of i2 we'll use thevenin equation or thevenin circuit to transform the circuit so as you know that for thevenin we detach the load and then from this circuit we'll find v thevenin and z thevenin so this circuit the voltage is v phi and these two elements here this is the z x m and the voltage across z x m will be known as v thevenin voltage so we can calculate v thevenin by v phase divided by this total impedance and multiplied by z x m taking j common we get this form and so the magnitude of v thevenin will be v x m divided by we we take the magnitude from here so r1 square plus x1 plus xm square multiplied by v phase now we'll do some uh, simplification we are assuming that v xm this is greater greater than x1 and also xm plus x1 is greater greater than r now i have taken these values from an example that will be in, uh, solving example 7.5 and from here you can see that r1 is the smallest the x1 is 1.1 but xm is 26.3 so xm is greater greater than x1 and xm plus x1 is also greater greater than r so what we'll do here is that we neglect r1 so in the top it will be xm divided by x1 plus xm because x1 plus xm whole square and under root will cancel so this is the simplified form of v thevenin so you have to remember this uh, formula to uh, calculate v thevenin and now we come to uh, calculate z thevenin we know that for z we put the source zero so we have short circuited the source now this thing is in parallel with xm so z thevenin will be now the solving parallel these two so z xm multiplied by r1 plus j x1 and divided by uh, the total resistance now this contains two elements one is part will be or the real part will be uh, r thevenin and the imaginary part will be uh, x thevenin so first of all we have to simplify this so what we are doing here also we are assuming that uh, xm plus x1 is greater greater than r1 and therefore this r1 is neglected so this is what is left to eliminate the j term from the uh, denominator we multiply by the conjugate of uh, the denominator and solving i hope you can follow these steps so this this is uh, z thevenin that we had and now we'll further simplify this opening these terms further opening all of the terms and now we can separate the real part and the imaginary part so this is now r thevenin and this is x thevenin okay separating r thevenin is by this term we can uh, simplify here also because xm is greater greater than x1 so this one will just take it equal to xm 
and now xm multiplied by xm xm square and divided by x1 plus xm so this is orthogonal in simplified form there could be many other possibilities but uh, the book is following this so i'll try uh, i'm also trying to uh, get into this result next we have x tangent this is x tangent and here also we'll simplify but we are just taking or uh, replacing x1 plus x m is equal to x m in both numerator and denominator now x m x m x m square will cancel x m square so x seven n will become equal to x one so these are the approximate values and now our seven n circuit just like this will connect whatever we have detached. So this is Z seven n, and this we are calling Z two. And now we need to find I two. So I two is the V seven n divided by these two impedances, and putting the values of the impedances. Collecting the real terms and imaginary terms, and now we can take the magnitude. So real square, imaginary square, under root two. So this is the magnitude of current I two. Now we can calculate P A G by putting the value of I two, this value. So putting in the value, we get this equation. So we have calculated uh, PAG. Now we can calculate the T induced by plugging in the value of PAG. So T induced will be PAG and uh, dividing by omega sinc. So this is one of the equations that we have to use in uh, doing our calculations. Okay. The next question is. when is the power supplied to r to s is s maximum so since this is the only resistive element so we are just considering this and this will be consuming power so the question is when will the power transfer to this will be maximum and we know from the power transfer theorem that for maximum or power maximum power transfer the source has to be equal to z load that means this hole is now we are considering it to be source source is equal to r2 over s and from here we get s is equal to r2 over this value so this is for the maximum power that is why we are calling s maximum and this is the condition for maximum power transfer so inserting s s maximum into the t uh, induced and this we can get now t maximum so t maximum we have put in the value of s in this equation and here also so we get this equation and now we can simplify i have done it all the steps you can pause the video and follow each line you know this cancels this gets cancelled so here and step by step you go also some more steps so this is the final value of t maximum and this is same as given in the book so this is what is given in the book and finally one more term left that is the starting torque so the starting torque is the torque at zero speed here speed is zero rotor is st stand still uh so this torque uh, is called the starting torque and we can find the starting torque by setting s is equal to 1 now what does this mean that the slip is 100% so maximum slip is the magnetic field is moving but the rotor is not moving 
and so there is a maximum slip and that is 100% or s is equal to 1 so we put s is equal to 1 in the induced torque formula to get starting torque so i hope this gives you an understanding how you can uh, derive all the relevant equations uh, for the induction motor thank you